Oh, show of hands. How many of you have watched the TV show Home Improvement? It was a pretty big show back in the 90s. I grew up watching it. Um, I remember back when I was a kid, uh, they used to show a bunch of, like, was it four or five episodes? This is back when they, we had those big radio dishes, you know, the whole thing had to move. Uh, I was pretty young yet to really remember the mechanics of all of that work. But what I do remember from it is back, it was it Saturday nights, my Uncle Carl used to come down and spend, t- uh, spend time with my family, my parents, and my brother and sister. Sometimes my, I can't say how much they came down with my aunt. My aunt and uncle, uh, Kevin and Candy, would come down too. But there is a channel we used to watch on. They used to broadcast like three hours worth of that show every Saturday night. And what my family used to do is we get pizza and then we'd sit down and we watch episodes of Home Improvement. Now, I'm sure many of you know I'm probably referencing the. Uh, that Tim Allen show back when. And the running joke of the show was that Tim, the main character, would he'd always get hurt by doing what he loved. Well, what he loved doing was working with tools. He was a handyman. Well, one of the statements that was made on that show, it was made by his little boy, and yeah, I'm still I'm referencing the show, was Tim was working on an intercom system in the house and he wasn't supposed to be touching it because they hired somebody else to do it. Well, he asked his middle son, Randy, to watch out, keep an eye out for their mom that he was going to, he was going to tinker with it. Yeah, he, I bet I can, I bet I can get that done quicker because the, the guy that was working on it had, had to leave. So. Randy's sitting on the countertop, kind of blocking Tim or his wife's view of Tim. <laughs> Tim was working. I think they were running a wire through the wall, and Tim was kind of jockeying it a little bit, kind of trying to get it up the wall. And next thing you know, he he pulls the whole a big chunk out of the wall. I think he pulls the intercom out or. It's been a while since I've seen it. I can't, I can't really tell you the exact details of it. But the moral of the story is, what I was getting at was when Tim does this, he go, he just subtly goes, "Oops!" His son spins around, and says, "Oops! Oops! It's not a word you want to hear in this household." Being how, you know, Tim always would get hurt or you know, break stuff. Now all that relates to what I'm about to talk to you guys about is that that's been kind of a a running joke or a running statement around here with that statement. Instead of saying, oops, we don't want to hear that word around this household or in this house, it's, oops, oops is not a word you want to hear around these farms. Seems how you don't want, you don't want any accidents, or you don't want any mishaps with, say, the corn planter, and you only plant half the planter with, or half the field. Now, back when we were milking cows, and I don't know why it was more prominent then. I mean, maybe it's because we were young, but it's probably heard me reference on Ryan and probably from Alicia too. I used to get hurt a lot. I used to go to the ER at least once every six months. And it was ridiculous. And it wasn't even like being careless. It's just accidents happen. And it just so happens that it was just bad timing on my part. And I would always be at the center of getting hurt. Uh, as simple as I jumped into a feed bunk. I have a 
steer shed down across the road from my house. And there's a feed bunk in it. Well, there's a, I mean, it's still there. There's a light attached to that building and the light was burnt out. Well, to get up to the wiring to, to shut the light off so I could go up and uh, diagnose what was wrong with it because we weren't entirely sure if it was the light that was burnt out or if it was the sensor because this is one of those sodium lights. Well, I jumped into an old feed bunk. You know, it's one of those that was built right into the building. Well, it hasn't been used probably 15 years. Well, I didn't notice that there was a two by four buried in this old hay and chaff, chaff, uh, chaff that was just kind of fermented, just had been there for years and years. Well, in that two by four was a pole barn nail, about oh, four inches long, sticking beyond the, the two by four. Well, I jumped into the feed bunk to get the switch. And it just so happens my foot came right down nice and square on that nail. It impaled about three quarters of the way through my foot. And this is when I was like a sophomore or a junior in high school. And just a second, I gotta get the dogs. Come on, guys. I'm actually on my way to do another video for you guys, so this is going to be a two video night. But I was a kid, and there's a car coming. And there's a, and as a kid, I mean, I was probably a junior in high school, and really didn't swear around my parents that much. Well, my dad was standing right there, and when, as soon as I stepped on that nail. I knew I did it. It went right through my work boot and I said a bunch of colorful things. A bunch of four letter colorful things. And hopefully you guys can hear me over the gator. Nothing is really as cute. It'll make your stomach churn when you look down and you see that there's a two by four nailed to your foot. I picked my foot up and the 2x4 came up with it. And you can feel the nail moving around in your foot from that 2x4 swinging. Oh, I don't know I didn't grow up. <laughs> and from the adrenaline rush I got from that, from what just happened,
late. We haven't had to go to the ER here much lately. I have gone to the hospital more than my brother and sister, thankfully. It's one of those things where if somebody's going to get hurt, I'd rather it just been me than Ryan. But we've been more fortunate lately. I can't say it's because we're being more cautious. Oh, 